Hello, everybody. Today, uh, we're during uh, the uh, advisory time, we're going to spend a little bit of time to talk about the uh, building procedures and rules, expectations, types of things that um, are difficult to do as we go around the building to talk. So we're going to do it in, through the television and talk through a number of items with you. Um, I'm going to talk about some disciplinary things, and Mr. Connell is going to talk about activities and parking, and, and uh, Mr. McCabe is going to talk about attendance, and Mrs. Fletcher is going to talk about crisis uh, needs and, and processes and that sort of thing here in a little bit. I'd like to start out with saying that um, I really appreciate the link leaders and the staff that put together the program to help us start the year. I think we have started the year in a very positive manner, and I hope that particularly freshmen and sophomores that are new to Liberty North High School have felt uh, a sense of being welcomed in a very legitimate and, and appropriate way. Um, we have had a lot of good comments by people, and, and I really appreciate all the work that went into that. Today we're going to um, talk through these issues. I'm going to start with one that kind of relates to what I just said. It's hazing and bullying type of uh, uh, concept, which is absolutely uh, a, a lousy thing, and it absolutely should not be happening here at Liberty North or anywhere for that matter. Uh, as we talk about a positive place to be and a safe place to be, one of the things that really makes that happen is that we have no hazing and, and bullying. And hazing is defined as an activity, any activity on or off school grounds that a reasonable person believes would negatively impact the mental or physical health or safety of a student or put the student in ridiculous, humiliating, stressful, or disconcerting position for the purposes of initiation, affiliation, admission membership, or maintenance of membership in any group. Uh, bullying is also defined as repeated and systematic intimidation or harassment of a student or multiple students perpetuated by individuals or groups. Bullying includes, it's not limited to physical actions including violence, gestures, theft, or damaging property, oral or written taunts, including name calling, put downs, extortions, and also through cyber bullying. These are things that we will take a very active stance at in terms of dealing with those, these things uh, from the faculty to, to the administrative group and counseling group. If you know of anything like this occurring, please let us know. No one needs to be subjected to anything like this ever in their life, but certainly not here at Liberty North. So if you're aware of anything, it's your duty as a, as a good citizen to, to share that. That's how we maintain a free and open democratic society is that we do, as citizens, take responsibility for our own actions and also help take responsibility for others' actions that, that hurt other people, and these things do. There is a form that, that you can see on the screen right now that shows um, the process and what you need to do to fill out uh, that information, and you can do so anonymously. No one needs to know about it, but once we have the understanding, then we will be dealing with this sort of issue. Next, I'd like to talk about academic dishonesty. Um, it's an obvious and a very, um, I guess, a, a situation that uh, we all should know about, and that is we don't cheat. People get tempted to do things like that at times because of grades. They sometimes get tempted to, to do so because uh, they've got a lot of pressure on themselves. They're running out of time. And what we need to do is understand that's a far more important thing about our lives, and that is to have integrity. It's the fifth of the, um, of, of the core values that this school has um, put forth in, in our REACH um, uh, acronym. And honesty is critically important in our lives to have a, have a good, well-balanced life and, and, and doing things in, in a very positive and constructive way. So academic dishonesty, cheating on tests, assignments, projects, similar activities, plagiarism, claiming credit for another person's work, fabrication of facts, so writing down things as if they're factual, maybe you did a Google search and you, you wrote some things down but didn't check them out, uh, or making up your own comments about something to justify a particular position carries with it consequences. It could be a, a zero or no credit, grade reduction, replacement assignment. Uh, second offense could be course failure, removal from uh, extracurricular activities. So please pay attention to the fact that this is something that common sense would say not to participate in, but there are consequences to it if people are tempted to do so, and we take action on that uh, between the teacher and, and the office. 
Uh, next thing we'll talk about is assault. There are basically three types of physical contact that uh, are uh, banned from the, our campus. And we've done a pretty good job over, over the first few years of not having uh, these types of actions. But the most serious kind is assault, and that's knowingly causing or attempting to cause serious injury or death to another person, recklessly causing serious bodily injury to another person. So push somebody against the wall and that sort of thing deliberately uh, could fall into this category. First offense can be expulsion. Assault in a first or second degree has to do with physical force such as hitting, striking, pushing somebody, um, but that conduct that creates a grave risk of death or personal physical injury can result in consequences of 180 day suspension or longer or up to that. So obviously that is something that no one wants to participate in. That's not a way to deal with uh, problems and issues that people are having between themselves. Fighting uh, is a mutual combat and that's a little lesser offense than the assault because assault is one way. Uh, but in both of these cases, law enforcement and legal charges will be filed. For the assault, it's an assault charge. For fighting, it's called an affray. And so if people are involved in those kinds of ways of dealing with their uh, issues with each other, they're also going to be dealing with the police department and then with juvenile authorities or if you're of adult age with the uh, Clay County uh, judge. So obviously this is something that we take very seriously because we want to promote a healthy, safe environment but also if people get involved, that there's some very serious consequences to it, that beyond school discipline. Next category takes some very severe consequences is drug and alcohol use and possession and tobacco. Any drug or alcohol um, possession, uh, sale, purchase, uh, use of being under the influence of carries with it anywhere from um, suspension of 45 days up to expulsion, depending upon whether you're under the influence or whether or not you, you were in possession or whether or not you transferred that dr drug, you gave it to somebody else. It, they, all those things are categories of higher levels of consequences, ranging from 45 day suspension up to expulsion. So uh, obviously this is something to, to not get involved in. Uh, when when you give something to somebody, like there have been people giving a pill to somebody that's a prescribed pill, you don't know, and that person doesn't know, what impact it's going to have on their body. We've taken two kids in the last four years to the hospital who suffered seizures and attacks because they took a pill that wasn't prescribed for them. And the consequences to that are obviously very serious. It's a, it's a legal charge and then also a long-term suspension of 180 days or possibly expulsion. The reason for that is to influence people to not get engaged in that because you could kill somebody if you gave them a pill that is not prescribed to them. So society has been very emphatic and very clear that this is the wrong type of thing to be involved in and you, no one should be um, partaking of that. So again, please remember that anything like that is not permitted and if you know of something like that occurring just let somebody know. We don't, we don't divulge any sources, but let somebody know that this is going on and we will deal with that. And you'll be possibly saving a life, possibly saving someone from having to go to the hospital, but certainly making life better for, for someone else if this sort of thing is going on. The other thing I want to talk about is electronic devices. Um, interestingly, this year the uh, electronic devices are going to increase by what we provide you with a, with a laptop computer here pretty soon. But remember, there's a common sense use to these things. The laptop is, is to be used for academic purposes, um, and that's the focus of why we're providing this for you, is to help support uh, the engagement in all of our academic learning. And we know that it's going to provide a much better way to uh, help serve the learning process for students than, than what we currently have and we're certainly excited about this opportunity. It's going to take a while as we as the adults work with this and uh, some people are going to take to it very quickly and some like me will take a little bit longer to take to this. So it's going to be a great uh, venture that we have for us but we need to use it right. We need to use it well and so just honor the fact that it, it needs to be used only for academic purposes. If you have a cell phone, that sort of device on your person, you can bring those to school but in the classroom, during the classroom time, the teacher has total control of whether or not that can be out, whether or not it can be used at all for any purpose. 
uh, whether or not she wants you or he wants you to put it in a bag as they come into the room. That's totally up to the classroom teacher. If they need to take it from you for an inappropriate use, that is, that is permissible. They, they have the absolute authority in how an electronic or whether or not an electronic device is used or, or um, seen in the classroom. So honor whatever your teachers say to that. There may be a difference in policy from one teacher to the next. It's okay, just understand that and, and, and proceed with, with that. Uh, uh, the other thing I want to talk about that also has some very serious consequences, but is also those consequences are not just for the one who's doing the act, but for the one who's uh, unfortunately receiving the, the, um, the, uh, the, the action of, of the person who's doing it, and that has to do with sexual harassment. Uh, our policy on sexual harassment is, is very clear and we want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, any action or any activity that uh, promotes uh, or says uh, anything to anybody that, that causes them to feel uncomfortable because it's a sexually related uh, comment or uh, has to do with, with their, their body or has to do with anything that has uh, as a sexual connotation to it is absolutely forbidden. And that includes anything in written form, uh, anything stated verbally, whether it's a joke or not. Uh, if, it's, if it's viewed as causing uh, someone to be uncomfortable because of uh, re being related to a sexual nature, then it is uh, impermissible and there are consequences for that. Uh, suspension up to 180 day suspension and again, the law can be involved in those things. There are times when, we, that then when charges will be filed if someone were to say something or write something to somebody that's a uh, harassing kind of uh, comment um, uh, in, in terms of um, asking for sexual favors or sexual advances or doing a name calling or threatening or intimidating. Uh, and that also includes anything that has to do with religion, um, national, origins of the race, ancestry, uh, disability, any kind of, of thing that would be putting somebody down, then uh, that's obviously impermissible and there will be consequences of that uh, all the way up to 180 day suspension and legal charges being filed. Uh, the other thing we'll talk about kind of related to that is public display of, of, of affection. I know that um, as young people start dating and get to know each other, uh, you want to, you know, hug and that sort of thing and kiss. But here at North, we ask that you just keep it the hand holding, maybe an arm around the waist. That's it. Uh, no hugging and kissing and that sort of thing and stopping. Don't, don't engage in that kind of activity. That's a public display of affection that um, we uh, are stating that that you should not be involved in. Uh, the last thing is kind of a potpourri of things. Threats, um, vandalism, uh, any kind of, uh, of action that really makes the, the, the uh, feeling of the school or feeling of people to be uh, a lousy feeling about by creating intimidation uh, to, uh, with people and by uh, threatening people that in a sense that you know, they're creating the view that I'm not sure I should walk down that hall or be in that area with that person uh, or any type of um, action or thought about vandalizing somebody's locker or somebody's car or somewhere in the building because you're upset about something. If you're upset about something, you need to come to the office and we'll work it out. But you don't take it out on a person or, or, uh, or an item, an object, and uh, we keep this school in really good shape. Our custodial crew is second to none and they do a wonderful job of keeping this building safe and clean for everybody. We need to honor that and we need to honor the fact that this community built a wonderful school for everybody to attend and we need to keep it that way. So all of us have a responsibility with that. Nobody has a very big responsibility but we all have a little responsibility to make sure that we keep this place cleaned up and in good shape and treat it with care and respect that, that it deserves. Okay, at this time, I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Cornell. He's going to talk to us about a number of other issues. 
Thank you, Dr. Jacobs. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about parking and parking privilege here at Liberty North. It is a privilege to be able to drive to school and park on our uh, school grounds, and, and uh, with that privilege comes responsibility. In order to be able to park here at Liberty North, first of all, you need to have, obviously, a legal driver's license and insurance for the vehicle you drive. You need to have both those, the, the proof of that, and uh, brought to uh, Pam Barrett, and she will be able to help you with that. It costs $60 to park on campus, and that is uh, prorated for the, as the semester goes on, and the semester will adjust that based on the number of days left. So it's real important that you have all those documents and have all that information ready to be able to park here. We will have plenty of parking for students all year long. So as you, as you get your driver's license and, and feel the need that you need to drive to school, that would be the time then you apply and get your parking permit. With those privileges comes responsibility, and that's a responsibility to drive in a safe and civil way through the parking lot, through our neighborhoods, and, and around. Uh, we, we get calls with kids driving crazy and, and driving too fast and, and, and doing things they shouldn't do, uh, and we follow up on that. And most of the time those calls have the driver's license numbers with them, and, and uh, our, our patrons that live around here are very quick to make those calls and let us know. Um, driving excessive speed anywhere on campus is, is definitely not something you want to do uh, and it's not safe. We have more students up here than we ever have and, and it's very important, hey, you just follow the speed limits and follow the laws of, of how, we, how we handle our parking lots. With driving and the, the privilege that comes with that, any of the discipline that Dr. Jacobs just talked about could be the loss of your driving permit as well. Um, so it, <laughs> it's very important you take care of your business discipline wise and do things if you want the privilege of driving up here. Also with parking, there is no parking along Eagle Drive after school, before school, uh, during the day. And Eagle Drive is the, the road that runs by the practice fields. If you have practices on any of those fields, that's softball, that's uh, football, that's soccer, also for volleyball, anybody, you park in the parking spaces, park on in the parking lot, and if you park there during the day, just walk to your car, get your stuff out for practice, go to practice, and then walk back to your car. You don't necessarily have to move your car closer to those practice areas. But we need to make sure we park in the parking spots and park in the parking lots. The next thing I'd like to talk about is activities. At Liberty North, we have a lot of activities. We have 21 varsity sports, and with that are the lower level sports. We have numerous activities that you can be involved with. As a student here, I highly encourage you to be involved in as many activities and events as you possibly can. It is very important that you get involved and be a part of Liberty North and what we do here. Um, and whether you participate or whether you come as a fan, Either one of those are great options for you. Uh, right now we're in season with volleyball, cross country, football, men's soccer, men's swimming, softball, women's tennis, and women's golf. If you haven't, if you haven't come out for those and have interest in that, you need to get a hold of those coaches. Come by my office. I can direct you to who those coaches are and give it a shot. Try it out. I always say try something and see if that's where you, what you like. And if you don't, that's great. And if you do, that's even better. Um, and if you want to be on the, the supportive side, we have activity passes. Activity passes are $30, and they cover all regular season events that you can go to. It's worth over $150, and we're charging $30. We want to have the best student section in the city, and we are getting there. Year after year, it's gotten better and better. Our students are civil, and they are supportive, and they show sportsmanship every game we have. And we want to continue to grow that. With freshmen in the building now, and a, new, a whole new group of sophomores in the building, we want all 800 of you at every game we have, every event we have, and everybody will know that they played Liberty North that night. So it's very important that you get involved. Another great activity that's out there, a club, is the Navy. And the Navy is a group that supports all activities, all events. And it's a, we're over 100 strong. I'd like to be over 1,400 strong with every student joining the Navy as a total student group that supports everything. So those are your activities. Those are, those are what we expect. 
We expect you to cheer for North and be great supporters of our programs and everything we do, and we want you to be a part of it one way or the other. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Mr. McCabe and Mrs. Fletcher. Good afternoon, Liberty North. Uh, I'm Mr. McCabe, here to talk to you about a few things regarding um, attendance and tardies. Um, it's really important that you're here every day. Uh, we'll take good care of you when you are. Um, you're going to grow. You're going to learn while you're here. Uh, so the easiest thing uh, to remember about attendance is be here. Uh, every day, every hour, and your experience will be uh, wonderful while you're here. Now with that, we understand that absences occur. If absences are to occur, uh, you need to contact our attendance office. Um, you can call the number 736-5511 uh, is our attendance number. Um, so you could write that down, give that to your parents, keep that in your phone so that if you're going to be sick, you know that's the number that your parent guardian needs to call to give you an excused absence for the day. It needs to come from your parent or guardian. You yourself cannot call in to excuse. If during the day you are to be excused for an appointment, your parent would call in, contact our attendance office, we would write a pass for you, it would be delivered, and then we'd be able to get you on your way to your appointment. That needs to be done. Uh, very responsibly and then once that's done and taken care of we will communicate um, what we need to to you. As far as uh, tardiness goes, um, obviously we need you to be on time to all your classes all the time. We understand there's some things that do occur. If you have an excuse for why you are tardy, a teacher will write you a pass and you're to take that to the next teacher, hand it to them and then they will enter it into the power school system appropriately. Otherwise, if you're tardy to class without a pass, the teacher will enter that into power school and then consequences will be assigned. If consequences are assigned on a weekly basis, if you are tardy three times or more, you will have consequences assigned to you. So three tardies in a week will result in an eagle hour detention of 30 minutes, four tardies will result in an hour long eagle hour detention, uh, five tardies will result um, in eagle hour detention time or possible suspension and then from six and above you're looking at in-school suspension or out-of-school suspension for the amount of tardies that you have in a week. So it's really important that you're here and then when you are here that you're on time. Um, in addition to those just basic procedural things, you need to keep track of the bigger picture which is the amount of total absences that you're allowed in a semester in a course. If you are to be excused for a medical reason. Um, you've had a procedure, um, you've had an accident, something happened that is going to uh, require you to be gone for an extended period of time, you would need to bring in a doctor's notes. Uh, so as you visit with your doctor, ask him, can you please write an excusal note? I need to take it to my school. This is standard operating procedure for a lot of our physicians and doctors, so they understand that. Once you bring that note, you would turn it in to Ms. Trester in the main office. Um, she will take care of it and enter it into the system. That helps you because you're only allowed a certain amount of absences during a semester. If during the semester you're absent 11 times or more in a course, you would need to appeal for that credit and you're subject to being denied that credit. So in essence, if you're gone 11 or more times, even if you have a passing grade in that course, you have to go through a process to earn that credit back because you've been gone for that amount of time. It's really important that you're here. We understand that things come up, so if those things do come up, you need to provide proper documentation. Give that to Ms. Trester in the office. Your parent and guardian can call and talk to me as well. But then we would go through the appeal process towards the end of first semester and at the end of second semester, and those affect your credits. So it's really important that you communicate this with your parents so they understand too, planning vacations and trips. You need to be here. You need to be at school. Uh, you need to be on time. You need to be in all your classes. And then those are the procedures for how you would handle things if for whatever reason you wouldn't be able to be here. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to Ms. Fletcher. Thank you. I am Mrs. Fletcher and I'm going to talk about student ID cards. Um, we will be distributing student ID cards to every student. You will be required to wear them. Uh, they'll be used for activities, library, events, and Eagle Hour. And you must be able to display them when you're requested to uh, show them to a staff member. The cost of replacement is going to be $5. Uh, the initial cost was $37 and that included your activity pass and your ID. I'm also going to talk about crisis drills briefly. 
Over the years, many of you have gone through the crisis drills with us, and we do our tornado, our fire, and our crisis drills. Very briefly, things haven't changed. Uh, you'll be sent to a shelter for your tornado. You're going to need to follow the directions of the teachers. They'll tell you exactly where their shelter is. It's going to get a little tricky for Eagle Hour. Teachers will give you directions on how to respond if we do have any kind of a tornado event during Eagle Hour. So make sure you listen to your teachers for directions. Um, again, there are designated shelters for each teacher. Our fire. If we do have a fire drill, most important thing for you to do is get yourself out of the building. Teachers will have a designated spot around the building. You need to make sure you follow the directions to find your teacher. Crisis drills, uh, depending on whether the threat is going to be inside the building or outside, uh, the teachers will direct you again. Most importantly, anytime we do any kind of a drill, our expectation is that you act appropriately, which means that you move quietly in the hallways, you get to your designated area, your safe area, and you follow the teacher's directions. So again, quietness in the hallway is going to be key so you can listen to directions. Um, last thing I want to talk about is our dress code. And uh, I, I think that we all recognize that students need to have expression, free expression, uh, but there has to be a balance between that and our expectations here in school. They need to be appropriate, and uh, again, we need to make sure that there is a balance there. So that being said, most importantly, let's make sure we're clean, that you're dressed neatly, that you follow our health and safety requirements of the school. Um, excessive baggy pants are not going to be permitted and print that is in any way promoting drugs or alcohol, obscenities, anything inappropriate are, are not to be worn as well. Um, any kind of disrespectful messages or anything that might insult any kind of a race or ethnic group, please make sure you check your clothes before you come in. We don't want to see that. Sunglasses, head coverings, not permitted. Ball caps, none of that stuff. Um, and girls, ladies, uh, notice a little bit of an issue with uh, tops that are strapless or that are spaghetti straps. We are not permitting those in our school. So make sure before you leave your house, if you're going to wear a top that might be questionable, uh, either change it or put a jacket on or a sweater on. And um, bare midriffs, again, another thing that please make sure your midriffs are covered. Short shorts, those are not okay. Uh, they need to be of an appropriate length. And the last thing I'm going to address as far as dress code goes is the tank shirt. We need to make sure that the armholes are the kind that uh, when the stores sell them to you, they're their close cut ones, not the big basketball openings. And um, sheer shirts for the ladies, please make sure your shirt is not see-through. Any hair or clothing issues that a teacher finds that needs to be addressed for safety issues, those need to be uh, adjusted immediately. So please make sure that you're adjusting your clothing when a teacher says that it is not appropriate. We look forward to the school year uh, helping you and supporting you with over 1,400 of you. Uh, there's a lot that is going on in our school, a lot of good things. We look forward to being able to help you however we can. Um, come and see us with whatever we can do to support you to make your time as an Eagle a wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you.